Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Last video I have explained you about the network analysis. What is network? What is project? Then what is the importance of network analysis? And what is PERT and CPM? These are the concepts I have explained in the last video. This video is the continuation, the continuing theory of network analysis. Because in examination, I told you very often they will ask the concepts of this network analysis. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about different concepts like time estimates in PERT. Previous video, I've explained you the difference between PERT and CPM. The PERT is a network, network analyzing, analyzing technique where the time estimates are uncertain. Non-repetitive projects, we apply PERT. When time is uncertain, we calculate three time estimates. Those I'm going to explain. Apart from the objectives of network analysis, then event times. Then I'm going to explain you important concept called critical path. Very frequently in examination, this concept will be asked. Apart from that, in the coming problems, most of the problems we are going to calculate critical path. Then slack, float, and management applications of network analysis. These are the topics I'm going to cover up in this video. So if you want the perfect knowledge, watch the video till the end. Don't skip in between. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain every point in detail. First of all, PERT, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. This is the technique of network analysis which will be applied for non-repetitive jobs. Unique projects where the time estimates of the activities are uncertain. So in those cases, instead of calculating, estimating one time, we normally calculate three time estimates for PERT network. So in a PERT network for each activity, three time estimates are taken. That is most likely the symbol is TM. Optimistic time, TO. Pessimistic time, TP. So in problems, while doing in problems also, you will come across three time estimates. TM, TO, TP. TM, most likely time. The most likely time on an activity is expected to take. That is represented as TM. Then T. Oh, the optimistic time is the shortest possible time or minimum time required for completing an activity. Then TP, the pessimistic time. This is the maximum time required to complete an activity. So most likely time, optimistic time, shortest possible, pessimistic time, longest maximum time. With the above three time estimates, average expected time for each activity can be calculated. So while doing the problem, three time estimates will be given for each activity. Now we have to combine the three time estimates and calculate one expected time for each activity. The formula to be applied to calculate expected time, TE. TE is the symbol which is used for expected time is equal to TO plus 4TM plus TP divided by 6. By using this formula, we combine the three time estimates and make one estimated time. That's it. Now, objectives of network analysis. So why we apply network analysis? The first thing is powerful tool for planning, scheduling and controlling. Every project before starting or taking up the project, it has to be planned. What are the resources which we require? What is the schedule of activities we have to do? How much time each activity will take? How to control the activities? So for this purpose, network analysis is the best technique and tool. Network shows in a simple way the interrelationship of various activities. A project is a bundle of activities. This network analysis will show the interrelationship between different activities then in case where the cost of delay in the completion of an operation can be measured then the total cost can be computed by making this network analysis 
we can be able to estimate the total cost of the project also. Next one, to minimize the production delays, interruptions and conflicts. <coughs> if it is not planned, if the project is not planned, then what will happen? There is a possibility of delay. There's a possibility of interruptions. There's a possibility of conflicts. So all these can be avoided if we make network analysis. That is the objective. Next is event times. Actually, in the next video, I'm going to explain you about activity and event. Activity is that, I mean, act which consumes time and resources. An event means the stoppage of one activity and beginning of the next activity. So event times we have to calculate. So the expected time of an event is determined in two ways. So every event, we have to find out the time. When the first activity will be completed, when the next activity will be started. So completion of one activity and starting of the next activity in between that we call it as event. So event times can be calculated in two ways. The first method is starting with the initial event and ending with the last event of the project by the process of forward accumulation. Example, eight events are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for, uh, forward event, that means starting. Starting with the initial event, we are finding out the time from the first event and going forward after first event, second event, third event, fourth event, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Last event is eighth. So calculating all the time estimates from the first event to the eighth event. Example, this is called forward accumulation or forward pass. Then second method is starting with the end event and arriving back to the initial event of the project. This by process back of backward called decumulation forward pass and backward pass forward accumulation and backward decumulation that means coming back from the last event to the first event from eighth event we are coming back to the first event it is called backward pass the two time estimates we are going to calculate that is forward pass and backward pass the first type of event time is known as is earliest expected time or earliest start time EST earliest start time and the second type of event time is known as latest expected time or latest finish time the two time estimates we are calculating EST and LFT EST earliest start time going from the first event to the last event whereas LFT latest finish time we calculate coming back from the eighth event to the first event in this way in every problem of network two time estimates we are going to apply EST and LFT now critical path very important concept in theory they will ask in examination and apart from that in every problem we have to find out the critical path Critical path is the longest path from the first event to the last event. There are many paths. There are many paths going from first event to the last event. So among those paths, the longest path is called critical path. So simply the longest path from the first event to the last event. Uh, then the activities lying on the critical path are called critical activities. So whatever activities are lying on the critical path are called critical activities. There should not be any delay in the completion of critical activities. If there is any delay in the performance of critical activities, then total, total duration of the project will get delayed. Because these activities are critical. It should be completed on time. No delay should be made on critical activities. Any increase or decrease in the time duration of critical activities or critical path directly affects the overall project time. Overall project time will get delayed if there is delay in the performance of critical activities. Generally in a project network, critical path activity is indicated by double line. So to identify 
which are the critical activities we use double line the non critical activities will be used only single line whereas critical activities double line then there can be more uh, one or more critical paths in a project it is not necessary that every project must have only one critical path no there is possibility that more than one critical path may be there in a project now it is a path uh, from the event first event to the last event where est and lft values are same so one more sentence you have to remember that critical path is the longest path from the first event to the last event where the est and lft values are same earliest start time and the latest finish time for every event we are calculating two types est lft so on critical path est lft values both are same that's it so these are the points you have to remember regarding critical path next slack slack simply means the difference between the earliest time and the latest time again in the coming problems we have to find out the slack slack is equal to lft minus est latest finish time minus earliest start time that will give you slack now float the critical activities does not have any slack because on critical activities all est lft values are same there is no difference in est lft value on critical path so there is no float ha huh? other non critical activities for non critical activities the est lft values are different in that case there is a possibility of delaying the activity there is a possibility of delaying the activity that is called float so the critical activities in a project do not provide management flexibility in time adjustment as they have to be completed within the stipulated time no flexibility no possibility of any flexibility is there for critical activities those activities should be performed on the specified time only otherwise the project will get delayed however non critical activity which constitute the bulk of activity do provide flexibility in the sense that their completion can be adjusted within certain limits the other non critical activities where est lft values are different there there is a possibility of flexibility to some extent the project manager can make some delay also without affecting the total project duration now this is because of spare time available between completion of preceding activity and the starting of next activity for example two activities are there a activity b activity a activity is the preceding activity b activity is the succeeding activity there's a time gap between completion of a activity and starting of the b activity that is the float that float can be utilized the term float denotes spare time available for completion of the activity how much spare time is available for completing the activity is called float float an activity of an activity is calculated by subtracting the est of the activity from the lft of the preceding activity how to calculate the float <coughs> subtract subtract the est subtract the lft from the est earliest starting time of one activity minus lft of the preceding activity example a is the preceding activity b is the succeeding activity so we we'll take est of b activity minus lft of the a activity then we will get the float earliest to start time now float has great practical utility in rescheduling activity as it has based on uh, activity times by using this float we can be able to make some flexibility in the project by utilizing the float that's all so this concept of float may be frequently asked in examination now last topic in this video is regarding management applications of network analysis in many areas there are innumerable areas where we can apply network analysis the most common areas of this network analysis are the construction of building bridge factory highway stadium irrigation projects etc roads flyovers 
ब्रिज डैम हाउसेस फॉर ऑल दिस कंस्ट्रक्शनल एक्टिविटी नेटवर्क एनालिसिस विल बी वेरी मच यूज इट्स अ हैंडी टूल वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टूल इन द हैंड्स ऑफ इंजीनियर्स सेकेंड बजट एंड ऑडिटिंग प्रोसीजर्स नॉव इट इज ऑडिटिंग ऑल्सो हैज बिकम ए ह्यूज प्रोजेक्ट द ऑडिटिंग हैज अ बिगिनिंग एंड एंड so many activities are there called verification watching uh, the confirmation all these are the activities involved in auditing and budgeting this uh, network analysis will be very much helpful next missile development research and development making a missile requires so many activities that activities will consume the time and resources so again network analysis will be utilized in missile development the installation of complex new equipment such as computer or lawn machinery nowadays there are many complicated sophisticated equipments machinery or computers to install those computers machinery again we may use this network analysis advertising programs and for development and launching of new product see here when a company wants to launch a new product advertising is required in what way how we can be able to make successful advertisement so that we can successfully launch a new product strategic and tactical military planning very important application of network analysis is in military operations in military so many planning has to be done regarding strategic activities and tactical activities so for all these activities in military organizations again network analysis is widely utilized next one preparing inventory plans this is the most common common application of network analysis managing the inventory inventory management lastly finding the best traffic flow pattern in a large city now there is a problem regarding controlling the traffic in a large city so the traffic police or traffic administration they will apply this network analysis to find out the solution of this traffic con congestion in large cities so these are some of the application management application areas where network analysis will be applied so in this video i have explained you different concept like earliest of time objectives events then critical path most important float slacks etc so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel subscribe if you have not yet subscribed by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we will continue our discussion on this topic of network analysis in the next video